there's one word to describe the WWE this week, it's... What? I'm Chris Walker, wrestling blogger who always tells it like it is. What a week it has been. No joking. Started with the money in the bank, which, for the record, I went six for eight in picks. Yeah, I said MVP would beat R-Truth before Bobby Lashley took over, but R-Truth lost, so I count that one as a win in my book. Interesting corporate ladder match, sort of a mix between Boneyard match and the Firefly Funhouse match at WrestleMania. A lot of brawling, a fair amount of humor, interesting cameos, too. But you can't tell me Stephanie was even in the same zip code as the WWE headquarters based on those cut cutaways. Anyway, interesting that they it looked like King Corbin tossed Rey Mysterio and announced the black off the building, when in the wide short it was obviously not the case. Asuka won the women's part, though not for the contract. More on that later. Oh, and uh, Otis won the men's part, and I... What? They had Otis pull a Carmella and actually catch the briefcase as it slipped out of AJ Styles' hands? That is so not right. They need to amend the rule book to state that only someone who actually climbs the ladder and takes the briefcase off of the hook is the winner. And anyway, where are the blankety blank is Tucker? Has he been future endeavored yet? Is heavy machinery dead before it could even get traction? Like a skunk without its defensive system, this makes no sense. <sighs> so anyway, Otis takes a men's contract. Then on Raw, we learned that Asuka didn't win the contract, but the Raw Women's Championship because Becky Lynch is pregnant. What? The man is a mom? How can this happen? I mean, I, I know how it happened. I took those classes in junior high. But after WrestleMania, I thought that no one could beat her. Now all of a sudden, she pulls in Asuka and ends the longest reigning Raw Women's Championship run. And furthermore, what's with this whole Seth Rollins looking derpy angle? Are they really going to do a Cartman who's the father angle? Because that's where this seems to be heading, and I don't like it. By the way, what happens if someone from SmackDown had won that Money in the Bank con uh, briefcase? Okay, okay, Monday's, Monday's out of the way. On Tuesday, we learned from Facebook and Twitter that since Sami Zayn is no doubt stuck in Canada for a while due to COVID-19, he had to vacate the Intercontinental Championship, and an eight-man tourney was set up to find a new one. Wow! Well, actually, that makes sense. I mean, it'll be a while before Zane can come back, I'm sure, but why not follow NXT's example? Make it an interim IC title. I mean, Zane will be back, right? Unless, since he can't cower behind Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura anymore, maybe he doesn't want to defend the title anymore. In any case, if the rest of the tournament is as decent as its first two matches, I'm, uh, I'm all aboard for it. Then comes Wednesday in NXT. The fact that Matt Riddle and Timothy Thatcher didn't get along wasn't surprising at all. Lord knows how Riddle and Pete Dunne pulled it off. Oh yeah, and the next NXT TakeOver is going to be called In Your House, as announced by Degeneration A. What? Look, just because last week was the 25th anniversary of the first non-major pay-per-view and the start of monthly pay-per-views for the WWE, doesn't mean the name should be revived. Yeah, I, I get it. Smart people are stuck in their houses because of the pandemic. The WWE is stuck in their house for the same reason. But they couldn't come up with a better name. I mean, even before they had takeovers and different... Cities, they had good names like Rival and Respect and The End. There hasn't been an In Your House in over 21 years. Why dredge that one up? <sighs> Nothing really happened on Thursday, save for Florida's governor trying to kill everyone by making it a quick reopening. Then on SmackDown, the IC tourney begins, and one of the matches was 
Drew Macken, uh, no, <laughs> Drew Gulak versus Daniel Bryan. What? Have you ever heard of Chekhov's gun? It's sort of a mantra in theater circles that states, if a gun is seen in Act 1, it will be used in Act 2 or 3. No two faces fight each other without one of them eventually turning heel. Is honeymoon over for Brian and Gulak? Will Gulak betray Brian in the semis or finals? Outlook looks strong. Ugh. But even all that is nothing compared to the WTF announcement of the week. WWE superstars are going to be in the next installment of the King of Fighters franchise. What? Now, for those of you who aren't fighting game aficionados like I am, King of Fighters is a game franchise that started in 1994 from the Japanese developer NSK, which combined fighters from some of their other games like Art of Fighting and Fatal Fury, along with others, in a sort of Marvel vs. Capcom style of fight. The only reason I'm wanting this is that I honestly didn't know A and SNK was still around and B, the King of Fighters games were still being made. And now they have WWE superstars like John Cena, The Rock, Undertaker, and Becky Lynch to fight it out with Terry Bogard, Robert Garcia, and Mai Shiranui? Incomprehensible! Although... Except for there not being a WWE 2K21 next year. Alright, alright, enough shocks for the w one week out of the WWE. Please make next week more sensible, guys. I'm not a young man, after all. I'm Chris Wolf with the Wrestling Vlog, who always tells it like it is. Stay safe, and I'll see you.